Do we have any other public hearing related items? No other public hearing related. Uh, the last item is a staff report. Yes. I want to see if we have any commission yes, items before we sorry. go there. Any commission items? Okay, then we go to the staff report for Pine Key. Thank you. The, uh, commissioners, item I want is a staff report on, on Pine Key. Um, Carlos Llanos from the Planning Commission will um, start the, the report and I'll, I'll uh, conclude with, with some, uh, some findings. Good afternoon. Carla Yanos with um, Planning Commission staff for the record. So today before you is Pine Key Island, which is approximately 9.2 acres um, of a privately owned island located west of Apollo Beach and um, southeast of McDill Air Force Base. Now the subject property was um, subject to a code enforcement case. So in order to resolve an issue with it, the applicant had to rezone the property. Um, however, that rezoning was not possible. So basically um, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over the history in case, you know, a few of you, um, it's been a while since you've heard that Pine Key Island um, come before you. So again, um, it was a code enforcement case. To resolve it, they had to go for a rezoning, but because they didn't have a future land use, the rezoning couldn't take place. So as a result, um, the owners um, initiated a map amendment to quasi-public quasi, um, future land use, and that was, happened in July of 2021, uh, cycle of plan amendments. It was found inconsistent by the Planning Commission um, as the um, public quasi-public future land use category was viewed overly broad, and it didn't really address some of the key items on, on the island. Um, furthermore, the map amendment um, went before the Board of County Commissioners um, it was determined that Pine Key did not fit within any of the established future land use categories within unincorporated Hillsborough County. So at that point, um, PC staff was directed to create a island-specific um, future land use category. And um, we ended up submitting a text amendment um, for HCCPA 22-07. Um, under that um, plan amendment, we added a new future land use category um, known as Island Recreation and it was added to Appendix A of the future land use element, or at least proposed. However, in October of last year, the Board of County Commissioners did vote not to transmit that text amendment due to a lack of information and some concerns about environmental impacts. Um, since then, um, Commissioner Owen has requested that a report be provided to the Board regarding public safety, um, the requirements, and some um, the impact on public safety related to the potential of Pine Key Island Comprehensive Plan Amendment and the rezoning with it. So a staff meeting um, with the reviewing agencies was held on February 9, 2023 to gather information on potential impacts um, and if possible to find a mitigative solution. Um, there were 22 staff members from eight reviewing agencies in collaboration um, and Adam Gormley can talk about what was discussed during that meeting and speak to the public safety um, aspects of it. Adam? Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you. So, uh, commissioners, we did, um, at, at the request of Commissioner Owen and uh, with the future issue item, we did meet with the sheriff's office and with fire rescue to identify what they might, what, what needs might be present in the event that this island were uh, allowed to in, in engage in business opportunities, uh, business activities. They did uh, indicate, they both indicated that they have had calls for service to the island and that if, it, if the use were, um, legitimized on there as a business, they would expect those calls uh, to increase. Um, in, in particular, there are some challenges that were identified by fire rescue, um, uh, particularly the access to the island. Uh, is, it's, it's, it, there's no road access, it's an island, so access either needs to be by boat or um, helicopter in extreme cases. Uh, they did note that uh, each call for service would take uh, the, the uh, engine out of service for approximately one and a half to three hours, and that was due to that, that boat being serviced also by an engine company uh, service in Apollo Beach. Uh, the fire rescue also indicated that they would uh, uh, desire to see an appropriate helicopter landing zone uh, designated on the island. I believe that there was a, an event there um, some years ago where, the, where people were, uh, there was a fire event and, the helicopter did need to land on the island to, to remove um, to remove one of the injured people. Um, also, uh, 
fire rescue's belief was that there should be on-site off-duty uh, paramedics uh, with uh, shelter and restroom facilities to accommodate them what, if the island were, uh, you know, while it was you know, during business hours. Um, following that, that consultation with uh, the sheriff's office and fire rescue, um, as, as Ms. Llanos noted, there, there was a meeting with uh, several reviewing um, interested public agencies, uh, one of which was the Tampa Bay Pilots Association. And they provided some perspective that I think was, was, was new to the whole conversation about uh, Pine, Pine Key. And that was the proximity of the island to the existing shipping channels. Um, the Pilots Association has an obligation to uh, ensure the safe navigation of ships through the bay, through, through Tampa Bay. And, and um, one of the um, one of the things that was noted was that the owners of the island have already asked that shipping um, schedules be altered to reduce the wave action and the wakes that that are that Pine Key is is experiencing. Um, I think that this is this was I would call this a, a game changing type of comment. Um, the island has been there. Uh, I, I call it an island. It's, it's a spoil island. It's an accumulation of, of, of dredge materials that have been piled up in the bay, has generated some, some vegetation and, and, and had it stay there. Um, however, it is very uh, proximate, as the exhibits in this report will show, to two existing shipping channels. Um, the the port, uh, port Tampa Bay was also at this meeting and expressed um, significant concern with having uh, port operations needing to be altered if there was a collection of people and, and a safety issue um, with, with a legitimized um, use of Pine Key. So um, with, with that, I, I, would, I would have a recommendation for the board that the uh, focus shift from um, what the, what the, really shift to what's an appropriate designation and use of this island. And I think that these are some of the things that have been talked about. Um, and, and recognize that the island is there, it, but it, it is um, not approved for or, or, or intended to be a, a business location, not intended to be something that would gather people and potentially create a safety concern with wakes from the, from the ships that are traversing our bay. Um, and while it's, it is noted that we don't have a lit future land use category that exactly fits this, I mm -hmm. um, believe that there could be a, uh, a category that is you know, similar to the direction we're in, crafting something specific to this um, location, this island, but recognizing that it, it, is, it, it is in a um, position where it needs to be um, secondary to the needs of the shipping in the bay and not establishing business rights or business opportunities that then might become an impediment to commerce through the bay. Um, I'll pause there and be available for any questions or... Yeah, if I may, Madam Chair. Hold, hold on one second. Yeah. You coming back with additional comments? Yeah, I just okay, wanted sorry. to notate that we do have Sean here from the Planning Commission to help answer any questions that you might have as well um, in terms of the environmental aspects of that as well. Um, but yeah, we're just here to gather some direction from the board and see how we need to proceed with this. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Owen. Thank you, and sorry about that, Madam Chairman. Um, so the, yeah, this was, this was pretty eye-opening to me, and I, um, you know, I, I went back, I looked, I said, how do you buy a spoil island? I, I didn't, and I still have never got an answer on how you can buy a spoil island for the price of a really nice car. Um, it's a little bit mind-boggling to me, and I, and I serve on Port Tampa, and there are a lot of issues with people that, uh, that purchase property near Port property that more so deal with submerged uh, islands, uh, because there's, the, you know, similar to a D, there's not, there, there, there's potential litigation over probably every one of those. Um, and, and I want to thank staff for going even further and in, in, in including the pilots or finding a way to get this information to the pilots. Um, I, I've, I've taken boats around this island uh, quite a few times uh, just to really look at it. And, and you, you, you look next to all the other spoil islands that are, that are appropriately preserved. Uh, you know, we've got our spoonbill habitat very close to it. Um, we have oyster barriers on these other spoil islands. 
mountains, and and then there's this island. And um, I, I always tell people similar. When I was a kid, I used to um, we used to take lumber and, and mattresses and build forts in the woods. We thought it was really cool, and it looks like that's just been done all over this island. It's uh, it's an eyesore, and it's it's really a shame to see what this has become. And then you you listen to what police, uh, you know, obviously everyone, I th- public safety is important to this board. I know that. Um, I believe that if we even created some type of land use designation for this island that um, when something, eventually when something happens, probably sooner than later, uh, we as a board will be held accountable for that, as we probably should. Um, I have, uh, I, again, I, I understand that the, you know, speculation, I, I've done speculation in my life. I'm, I, I did well and I did bad on speculating with property. Um, but in this instance, you're talking about a property that was purchased for a song, uh, a, a, I mean, a really a helicopter pad on this small, tiny island, it sounds borderline ridiculous to me, but a necessity. Uh, so I, I have been working with staff, um, and, and Commissioner, stick with me here, I know it's getting late, um, to, to um, I, I want to move to create a, a, a land designation, and I'll be interested to hear what you commissioners think about this, uh, but I'm going to move that a spoil island land use category is created consistently consistent with land use categories that resemble our natural preservation land use category, but recognizes private ownership like in a nature preserve. So what I'm moving for is to, uh, because I know that this is is such a different element that it's privately owned, Um, but I I really think that we as a board have to set a precedent for the rest of these spoil islands. Like I said, I hope no one can ever buy a spoil island, and I'm going to look into this further to see see how in the world people can, and maybe another commissioner knows this, but I have not gotten an answer to how you can even purchase one of these islands like this. So uh, that is my motion. I, I know it can be pretty harsh to the to the owners of this island, but again, this is speculative, and uh, and I think that it's in, important that we and Mr. Gormley, if you could confirm too, uh, I looked into the issue with the pilots. I mean, w- w- if this island gets designated for the use that the, the developer wants, w- won't there they almost trump the um, the um, our, our pilots and our, our moving cargo in and out because of the because of how the, it would become designated for for residential and recreational use doesn't that almost trump the pilots it, it would it would put the so the pilots association is their main charge is is, is safe is safety so what they've expressed is if there becomes a, a this becomes a gathering place that that there may be safety issues that would require that they yield port traffic or, or alter it to avoid an unsafe situation <laughs> such as a a, um, a large gathering at the island yeah so th- their 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 stated concern I would say there it was their executive director who's at the meeting but stated that if this did become a legitimized uh, business use that they may be in that position of having to to um, alter that port traffic yeah well I, I think um, you know I would highly recommend my uh, you know my, my motion to be approved uh, I think that we need to really listen to our fire chief and our sheriff as well as our pilots that's an important part of our economy here so uh, that's all I have thanks I'm on the I'll line, the on the line and I, I'd like to answer some of these questions if I could or some of these concerns. Um, uh, hold on the, one second. Hold on one yeah. second. Uh, staff, okay. who's speaking? Because we're in board discussion now. Um, online is Cole Weaver, who is the owner of Pine Key Island. And I can answer some of these questions or concerns that you guys have. Point of order. Point of yes. order. We haven't recognized anyone from this no. application. This is not about this application. No. This is just about a report that we have. Yes. Well, I also sent an email to the county County staff, can you please mute the person online? We are in board discussion at this time. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner And I seconded that. Yes. You want to speak? You in the queue to speak? Okay, it showed up. Okay, Commissioner Kemp. Okay, um, 
and we have struggled with this for a few years, as you know, with, um, I felt an incredible lack of information because it was, you know, the first time we had gotten anything like this and had very little information how to deal with it. And there was uh, a desire for quite a robust operation out there. Um, and long-term, um, our um, uh, code enforcement went out there because it was being used without having any kind of zoning. So it's been a complicated issue. And I wish, I hope that we start to have this as a model for others that come. Um, we went from uh, all over the place trying to understand the implications of the request that was made of us. Uh, and then, you know, I think there was, it was pretty strong, uh, the opinion of the board on not to have an island category that applies to every island uniformly because these are all so different, this one being the location, the unique circumstances of it. To answer your question just a little bit, and I'm not the expert on this, and actually um, uh, Mr. College who's here might have, have some more information about this, but at some time there were, um, there have and is, uh, are, uh, tax rolls that have been bought up on submerged properties like right off the coast. This turned into a, a big um, issue at the city of Tampa um, a couple years ago and, and some robust building to happen. I, it's, and I speak from afar because it was didn't come before me, but it seemed as though it was in the water. <laughs> and, it was, you were on that uh, county, that's right, I forgot, uh, the city council at the time. And, um, and you know, it was uh, rejected uh, at some point in that process after a lot of um, discussion. Uh, we had the same potential for that kind of thing uh, in the county, although I haven't seen, this is the only time I've seen something like this. And I do think that we have to uniquely look at all of these properties. This is a very small property. I heard there's even some maybe questions about the size of it, um, actually. But um, the, the circumstances, I, I like the idea of, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, of um, what you suggested for personal use. They bought it to use personally uh, or, you know, that. And, and I think prior to this, in this particular case, what I vaguely recall reading is that it was owned um, by an individual and that they bought it from an individual, not from a tax roll or anything like that, I believe was the circumstance. I don't know if Mr. Gormley has that or if I'm misremembering whatever it was that I had seen about that at one time. The, the, the deed um, of transfer to uh, from 2017 indicates it was sold by Tiki Bay Island LLC. So it was a, a, a purchase. How it became um, subject to a deed, I we couldn't answer that question. I see. Um, and I don't, I don't know if others want to hear some more, Mr. College, because those were the questions you asked. But. Oh, hold on one second, please. Commissioner Wasto. Oh, I just wanted the, um, the motion clearly restated before we voted, that's all. Okay. Commissioner Coyne. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't resist uh, chiming in to what Commissioner Kemp was saying. We had a case that came up at the Tampa City Council a couple of years ago where uh, someone had purchased submerged land inside of a lagoon off of the Courtney Campbell Causeway and they actually were attempting to get it zoned so that they could fill it in and develop it. And um, it created quite a stir, as you can imagine. Uh, it was unanimously rejected, but in the course of the discussion, we found out that there are, I believe, and I, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but I believe, four parcels on the water side of Bayshore Boulevard that are uh, basically in the same category. They're actually owned, and someone could theoretically come and try to zone them in, in some way. Um, 
th this has been going on, I think, entire. You know, it's it's unfortunate for the for the applicant. It's unfortunate for the community. This has been going on for a long, long time, and we've been wrestling back and forth with what to do. But I do have to say, this information from the harbor pilots is new to the discussion, and I think it really does change very much what the possibilities are here. So my understanding, and you're going to restate the motion, I guess, in response to Commissioner Wastel's asking for it, but um, my understanding is that whatever you do, it's just going to be related to this parcel, correct? We're not going to try to solve the whole countywide problem of, of submerged lands everywhere. We're just going to deal with this one. I, I definitely will support that because that's the only way we're going to be able to finally put this thing to bed. Yep. Thank you. St planning staff. Thank you. I'll be really brief. Sean College, Planning Commission staff. Uh, the issue of submerged lands that are privately owned, which was co correctly characterized by the commissioners here, but when that occurred, um, at the direction of the BSEC and the City of Tampa, we did change the comprehensive plans in both jurisdictions to strongly prohibit filling of lands for development. And if that were to occur, it would become natural preservation. So it's it's not that issue has effectively been solved for submerged lands. Is as a result of that case. As a result of that case, it was at the time uh, both both uh, governments directed staff to to do that, and we did, and it's in the comprehensive plan now. So submerged lands is effectively solved. Um, lands, islands that do not have land use, um, that is still an issue. There's a few of them. This is a privately owned one. For example, 2D and 3D that are the large spoil islands that are owned by the port also do not have land use currently. Um, there's an island off Alify Coast that is owned by Mosaic largely, and that does not have land use as well. Um, so um, you know we've been looking at this for a number of years. Uh, typically, we do want to have the owner to be supportive of us working with them on a land use. So we have reached out to the port, and we haven't um, come to a decision yet with them on, on assigning land use, such as public, quasi-public, or something else. But it's still available should the port be interested in doing that. And we can reach out. We have reached out to Mosaic before, and they felt hesitant. But, um, but these are issues we are dealing with. Okay, and I'd just like to make yeah. one comment because with the Tampa Bay Pilot Association and when thinking about the ships that are coming in, that's an economic impact uh, to our county. You know, they're bringing in commodities and yet you have some on the folks out on the island for pleasure, then you're asking them to alter their schedule because they might have some boats they want to run up and down the, the river at the same time. And that's a business decision. So I just want to share that with us and look at it from an economic opportunity already with the port and the shipping. You know, that's a huge business here in our county right. is with our shipping. So we need to really be mindful of what the recommendation, and we do not interfere with our economic development with the Port of Tampa. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner. Yeah. Um, Cool. In, in every commissioner here, you all have made great points. Um, I think we're all in sync with this. And, uh, and, and to go further on what you said, our port's extremely limited because of depth as well. And, and um, the requirements for dredging uh, are very difficult because you're talking about environmental, you're talking about extreme costs too as well. Um, so so I'll, I'm going to restate... Um, I move that a spoil island land use category is created consistent with land use categories that resemble our national preservation land use category, but recognize private ownership like a nature preserve. Yeah. You want a second? Do we have a second? Uh, I already second. Oh, no. Oh, you, that's right, you restated. <laughs> Commissioner Wansley, you want to say something? No, I just wanted to hear it again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. County staff, I planning wanna, staff, I'm sorry. I would just like to clarify. Um, are we requesting the text amendment to be specifically to Pine Island or applicable to any type of island within unincorporated Hillsborough County? It's a great question, Mr. Gormley. Can we make that designation for this particular item or this particular island, or do we have to create the land use category uh, first, um, or can can I designate it for this particular? Because that's what it would be. So, so we, 
My understanding is this would be crafted for this particular island, it can be applied to the island, and can be zoned consistent with that future land use category and specific to Pine Key. Okay. That's what I'd like to do. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to state one, a uh, couple items for the fact. There are 11 islands currently in unincorporated Hillsborough County that have no future land use category. Yeah. So if one of those islands come in and ask for a future land use amendment, um, that tax amendment wouldn't apply to them, correct? That is correct, but I think it's something this board needs to address at another date. Uh, I don't know why that uh, the, the port or Tampa doesn't own all these spoil islands. I, I think this is a dangerous slippery slope, but I hope I hope this board is showing our position on those other islands uh, by how we're acting today. But 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 I, I don't want to blindly make a decision on on other islands that I'm not familiar with. So I'm going to stick my my uh, motion and move specifically as to this island. Thank you, Commissioner Kim. And again, I just like to confirm too that I believe it should be specific to this island because we don't have the information about the others. Although I can definitely see that there's a problem we need to know. But it's one thing. It's one thing that because it came to us at some part of this being applying to all islands, and that was one of the things we adamantly said: no, no, we cannot be doing that. Um, and just for. Uh, clarification. So we are voting on uh, on on this today, and then um, does this um, come back as an agenda item? How does that work in terms of? I mean, we're voting for kind of a direction here, correct? Yes, Commissioner. If, if this motion passes, expect that the uh, that the category would come back as well as some some uh, uh, suggestion on how to move forward with with landing that fully on on the island. No pun intended. Yeah. Okay. No other comments? Yes. So it'll be in the form of three applications. So you'll have your text amendment that'll come through, initiated potentially by county staff, um, in, and we'll work or collaborate with the applicant as well um, with the direction that you guys gave. And then um, the other two applications would be for a um, comprehensive plan map amendment and a concurrent rezoning. And that is still the direction you, you the board wants to go, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, you know, the comments, please record your vote. Motion carried six to zero. Okay. We don't have anything else. We adjourn. Thanks so much. Thank you.